worried I'm bringing too much camera gear. Whatever. Better to have too much than too little. But I do have three cameras here. I'm bringing my 6x17, which I plan on using the most on this trip. And I'm bringing my RZ67. Uh, to be honest, I don't have any compositions in mind that would warrant bringing this camera, but she's been a little neglected lately. Felt it was time to dust her off and take her for some exercise. And then the final camera I'm most excited about, because it's new to me, a Mamiya C220. And uh, this is a real beautiful camera. I've only put a, one roll through it, so I'm excited to get get out and put it through its paces. This is actually a gift from a YouTube viewer. Uh, this was his idea of a uh, contribution to my channel, and I firmly approve. So big thanks to AJ for giving me this beautiful TLR. Okay, so here's the situation. Summer is nearly upon us, and so that means the deserts are getting crazy hot. Uh, but it just so happens the next three days out in Mojave are gonna be delightful. I'm talking high temperatures in the 60s to mid 70s. That's Fahrenheit, so uh, I apologize to the entire rest of the world. I don't know what that is in Celsius, but it's gonna be real nice. Um, and so for the next three days, I'm gonna go out camping, take some pictures. I have two locations in mind that I really wanna photograph, so I'll knock those out. And then the rest of it will just be playing it by ear, hoping I find something cool. I'll be sleeping in the back of my truck, as is tradition. So I have my uh, bed platform and mattress all rolled out. This bad boy is gonna be nice and full of Kodak Portra film and um, Really looking forward to it. It's gonna be nice to get off the grid. So I'm loaded for bear. Just gotta finish packing here and then tomorrow we ride. This looks promising. I've never explored back here before, but judging by the satellite imagery, I think there's some pretty sweet campsites back here. Oh yeah, this will work just fine. This is a nice campsite. It'll do. Man, it is nice out. The temperature is uh, comfortable. In fact, it's so nice, I kind of want to take my shirt off, but I'm not going to subject you to that. Plus, I don't want to make any of the lady viewers faint. <laughs> um, this campsite's perfect. I love it with these granite boulders here. It's real sheltered. There's even little alcoves for campfires and basically a whole private canyon back there. Um, so I'm really glad I found this. My biggest concern is that I'm going to lose it because I really came here to photograph something that's a little down the highway. And I need to go tackle that in about two hours. So I'm going to have to leave. Um, and hopefully while I'm out doing that, no one swoops in and takes this sweet campsite. But it's a risk I gotta take because after all, I'm here to take photos and I gotta make that a priority. While I got some time to kill, I figured I would break out the Mamiya C220 and shoot some uh, square format of these nice boulders. 
Uh, several years ago in Joshua Tree, I did some 6x17 um, pictures on black and white of the boulders down there. And I was real happy with how they came out. So this is going to be kind of contributing to that series. Uh, except this time, instead of a long skinny rectangle, I'll be doing a squat, perfectly square rectangle. I'm going to be using a red 25A filter on these because uh, these photos are really about the, the contrast of shadows on these light colored rocks. And the red 25A will help darken the shadows and also darken the sky above, which is uh, something else I would like out of these photos. TLRs are so quiet. Used to my RZ67. It sounds like a freaking cannon going off every time you take a picture. I generally prefer using SLR or view cameras because they allow me to get much more precise with my compositions. TLRs and rangefinder cameras always throw me off a bit with the parallax error, but I found that using the Mamiya C220 was actually quite easy in this regard. The viewfinder has some nice features where it has little etched lines indicating how the composition has shifted based on your focusing distance. But not only that, I actually found it was kind of easy to just frame up the composition real careful, and then before I take the shot, just lift the camera up about two inches so that the lower lens lines up roughly where the upper lens was. It actually worked out pretty well. Now I am quite happy with these photos. I think they're a good addition to the panoramics I did earlier in Joshua Tree. But more than that, every time I shoot black and white, I think, I should shoot more black and white. It doesn't often occur to me to load up my camera with monochrome, but I'm always glad when I did. There's something special about shooting black and white, especially in square format. All right, well, I think I maybe got one or two good shots in there, but it's time to get on to the main event. Well, the wind has picked up quite a bit, as you can see, which sucks because uh, shooting with a view camera in the wind is a royal pain in the ass. In fact, uh, the only thing that's more annoying than shooting a view camera in the wind is trying to make a YouTube video while shooting with a view camera in the wind. This post office here, you know, the building isn't really anything that incredible to me. Um, I normally wouldn't shoot a building like this I don't think but it in front of this desert backdrop with the uh, the road going off into the distance and all that kind of stuff that's a very nice deserty vibe so I felt I wanted to uh, to capture it all right f16 and two-thirds f20 at one fourth of a second. I had pre-visualized this photo under dusk lighting, which is a little dicey here because there's no artificial light to be found, and often what makes a dusk photo interesting is the interplay of artificial light with ambient dusk light. So I tried to time this photo for just a little bit after sunset when you get that purplish blue ambient glow, but it's not so dark that you lose the subject. If I'm being honest, I was not in the best of moods after I took this photo. I wasn't feeling a real strong connection to my subject in the first place, but also the lighting wasn't turning out quite like I pre-visualized. It kind of felt like the whole thing was falling apart. In fact, I lacked so much confidence in the results that I ended up coming back the next day and shooting it in daytime, which I don't think is an improvement, but I really felt the need to cover my ass because I thought things were going so poorly the night before. Looking at it now, uh, the picture is not as bad as I expected. I don't think it's some of my best work, but 
it's actually not a terrible shot. But at the time, my lack of confidence in the photo, coupled with the aggravating wind, put me in a pretty foul state of mind. It was one of those nights where the voices of doubt in my head, the ones that tell me I'm a hack and that I should just quit and go home, they're normally pretty quiet, but they started yelling. So I wasn't real happy with how things went yesterday. I don't think the pictures were that good and um, I was getting real frustrated with the wind. So I just tried to get a good night's sleep, wake up this morning, try to get my mind right. And uh, I did that by breaking out the Mamiya C220 and shooting some square Kodak Portra 400. Um, just photographing some cactus around the campsite there in the early morning light. And I think I got a few good shots, but more importantly, I think it got my mind right. Now I'm ready to go, I'm ready to tackle another photo. And uh, yesterday is water under the bridge. It's a new day, time to tackle something new. Uh, so I found this garage here off the 15 freeway and uh, it's looking pretty good. This will go nicely with my Route 66 garage photo. Using my 210 millimeter for this one. I haven't used this lens in a little while. And I know I'm wearing the exact same clothes as yesterday. But that's camping for you. And I don't appreciate your judgmental tone about it. All right, I'm just a little too close. I gotta move my car up so I can move my camera back. I tend to pursue photography these days as a collection of ongoing projects where I'll have a series of photos that I'm working on over the course of time. Photos that have kind of a similar theme. One of those series I'm working on is interesting buildings shot straight on on 6x17 format. Now working on series like this helps me keep focused and have something to pursue, but the downside is sometimes it can foster a lack of creativity. Because after all, if I'm shooting similar subjects in a similar way, I can start to feel like I'm not really flexing my creative muscles. As much as I like this photo and how it fits into the larger series of images I'm working on with this, I was feeling a little uncreative. And so I felt the need to try photographing this subject from a different angle, where the image will still fit into the series overall, but it's not the exact same composition as every other one. And this composition here, coming from an angle on the property, I do think is an improvement. You get a better sense of the shape and size of the overhang, but also I really love the blacked out billboard to the right and the extra graffiti you see on the left. You just get a better sense of the property overall. I'm glad I got that straight on shot, but I don't think I would have felt as fulfilled if I hadn't explored some different angles on this. So I wanna shoot some square format detail shots, this building here. Um, which I have my Mamiya C220 for square format, but I've decided to put the 6x6 back on my RZ and shoot it that way uh, for two reasons. One, given that it's an SLR, not a TLR, I can get a little more precise with my compositions when I'm up close. Uh, but also, this poor girl's been sitting in the closet for so long, I feel like I need to, need to stretch her legs a bit and actually make sure it's still working. And here's a hot pro tip for you. Make sure the battery is in. Jeez. 
using my 110 millimeter lens here. Let's hope she fires. All right. I hope you're not sick of me shooting abandoned structures in the desert yet because I just can't seem to stop. All joking aside, I am keenly aware of the fact that if I continue photographing every old building I find in the desert, it could quickly lead to a stale portfolio and a pretty steep creative slump personally. I would hate to keep this up purely out of habit. But I don't think it's that. I truly feel a strong urge to photograph these things. Mainly because I don't think they're going to be around much longer. Now I don't know exactly what this building was in its heyday. Best I can make out on the sun bleach signage is Bingo Truck Stop, 14 foot clearance. But this building is part of a dying species. Structures like this soon will no longer be. Won't be long before we're living in a world of self-driving semi-trucks and cars, and buildings like this will just no longer be necessary. And thus, the towns they reside in, many of them won't be necessary either. So I do feel a strong urge to get out and photograph them. And let's be honest, they look damn cool. So I found yet another cool abandoned building, and um... This was a perfect lesson in exploring your space and trying to coax some creativity out of yourself because I was originally just planning on shooting at how I shoot all these buildings from across the street straight on or from an angle, kind of catty corner to the building. Um, but they just felt uncreative and I wasn't excited about it because I've done that so much, uh, especially on this trip. So um, I grabbed my six by six, went into the space, came inside to photograph this chair on a square format. And um, that really immediately sparked a composition in mind for a six by 17. So um, had I not pushed in and kind of fought my lack of creativity, I wouldn't have found this. And uh, now I'm taking a shot here with a 90 millimeter. And I think it's really, really cool. I love how the light's coming in through the windows here on this uh, old busted up chair. Just really have to be mindful of where I step and put my tripod because this place is covered in bird shit. Well, I definitely think this composition helped bring back some of that creative energy that I felt I was losing grasp of. Because after all, you know, when I go out to photograph these old buildings in the desert, I don't often get a chance to photograph a good interior. So this was a nice way to mix it up within the larger body of work. I don't often use my 90mm lens these days because I'm just not all that attracted to the wide angle look anymore, but I feel like it worked well here. The converging lines of these two walls help draw attention towards the center of the image, and I just love the strangeness of this subject. You have all these windows here with no glass in them, this creepy chair off to the left, and then the light streaming in, creating these sharp angles between light and shadow. Just makes for an interesting photo. Now I did try a slight variation on this composition further out using my 115 millimeter. I like that it includes part of the building's exterior, but I think overall the composition is just a little too cluttered. There are just too many lines and shadows clashing with each other, so I feel that first composition with the 90 millimeter closer in was the better of the two. And so that's the shot I focused my efforts on as the day came to a close. The composition was finely tuned, but the light wasn't quite there yet. I needed the sun to drop a little bit more. 
As it did, the light streamed into the building at a little more horizontal angle. The shadows cleaned up a bit, and I think overall the picture improved. And one of my favorite things about this shot is the five birds perched on the telephone wires outside. I really lucked out with their placement. You can see that they're not overlapped or interfering with the walls or window panes at all. They're positioned just perfectly. With the cool light of dusk enveloping the landscape, I was faced with a new set of challenges, one of them being ultra-long exposure times. Between the center ND filter for my 90mm lens and reciprocity failure, I was getting into some pretty long shutter speeds. But the bigger issue here was the contrast range. The light outside the window was so much brighter than the interior that I was worried the contrast would be too high and I would start to lose shadow or highlight detail. So what I did here is I exposed for the interior and then pull process the film, basically reduce developing time so that the highlights were knocked down a bit. And as you can see, it worked swimmingly. I ended up with a great exposure and I maintained good color throughout the sky. I love this photo. It's without a doubt the best version of this composition. Dusk brings such a mood to these scenes. I'm happy with how it turned out, and I'm real happy I ended on a high note. Well, stick a fork in me, cause I am done. Just about photographed that chair to death, so I'm gonna pack it in. This was a productive trip. I think I got a few good pictures there. And as always, Appreciate you coming along with me. Thanks for watching. See you next time.